So, hi, Nicola. Nice to have you have you here. Would you like to introduce yourself in the in the beginning? Yeah. Um, hi. Thanks for having me here today and talking to me about what we're doing. Um, so, my name is Nicola. I'm a PhD student in England at Nottingham Trent Uni, mm. and um, yeah, my research is looking at older adults and physical activity, keeping people moving for as long as they can keep it in their homes for as long as possible and generally just trying to yeah keep older people healthy essentially yeah yeah so older adults trying to keep them moving how how difficult is to motivate them to be be active yeah and that's one of the one of the problems especially at the moment with everything that's going on it's very easy just to sit back and you know not go outside not go and do things because obviously all the social activities that have been stopped you can't really go out you can't see your friends as much so yeah it is a lot more difficult to keep people going mm. but, and and how, how how do you try to motivate them teach them behavior change what what kind of strategies and tactics you are you are using well I don't really have many strategies for motivating them at the moment it's you know that's a bit further up the road of what we're trying to do at the mm. moment it's more just understanding what they're doing and how much movement people are doing, what kinds of movements they're doing. So then sort of mm. give us a baseline so of where to start. Yeah, so first defining the baseline, how sedentary they are, how much they get MVPA, and then yeah. then maybe trying to change change behavior. Yeah, exactly. So it's trying to work out what behavior needs to be changed first before we start mm. trying to come up with all these wonderful ideas that aren't really based on anything. Mm. Yeah, and, and you have chosen Phibian as one of the tools in your project how did you how did you end up up choosing it yeah so we've been having a look at a few different since few different systems that we've got and I came across this one so we're looking at a wearable sensor something that we can just give to people that doesn't need to be attached in any particular way so where it can mm. be just put in a pocket and basically just forgotten about you get a lot of people that are more willing to use it because they're not constantly reminded that they're being monitored. They can just sort of put it in pocket and forget that it's there. Which is mm. quite the idea of it. Yeah. And how, how do you feel working with the older people? Is it difficult with the technology with them if if they need to? Have you tried any other other things where they need to use some application? Does it does it work with them? Well, the, the problem at the moment is that we can't actually test with any older adults because of all the social distancing and the keeping all the vulnerable people safe and everything else. We've not really had much experience with the older adults yet. It's been mostly me just mm-hmm. testing it out to see what would work and then talking to some potential participants about what they would be happy to use. And this is one of the ones that's come mm-hmm. up that people are very happy with. And that they would be willing to try when we're allowed to go and test with them again, and you know we can go and talk to them. So it's between this and a yeah, watch-based so. system that we had, and yeah, so this is one of the ones that they seem quite quite keen on using when we're allowed to go and work with them. Yeah, so pandemic made made your measurement quite a bit more more difficult, and and now you've been just yeah. testing by your by yourself. How? Of how have you liked, what have you seen as the benefits of, of Fibian from your own testings? Yeah, so from um, from what I've been doing, mostly the, the initial setup I found like really easy. So it's just as straightforward as plugging it in and it's good to go. It's a lot easier than some other systems where you have to, you know, put in what you actually want to collect, what times you want to collect it, you've got a start point, end point, what sort of data you want. With this one, you can just plug it in and go, and it's dead simple. It's a really easy way of collecting some useful data. And then also the um, mm. outputs that you get from it. So having the um, the sort of, what's the word? The summary sheet that you get. It can sort of give you the overview to start with of what you're looking mm. at. And then being able to go into the data as well and sort of do your own analysis with it and look at it in a more in-depth way. And that's been really helpful. Mm. Just having that sort of open-ended yeah. part to it as well that we can get into yeah. the data. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. And and so Fibian provides both the PDF reports and then the online reports which are working in the web browser. Which ones do you plan to use in your study? It will probably be the um, web browser ones where mm -hmm. you can um, like download the Excel files as well and get into the data that way. Yeah. So yeah. It, we're still working out what we're actually going to use it for and what we're going to do with the older people. But it might be a case that we can give them some of the summary sheet or the PDF file as well, just so they can see what they do to sort of start that motivation process of this is what you're doing at the moment. Come back in a few months and we'll see if anything's changed. We can have the same sort of summary sheet coming out of it. And that could be quite useful. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. And how is it you've been testing it yourself during the pandemic in a social distancing? Did you get any results that surprised you or shocked you or how was your sedentary behavior and physical activity during these times <laughs> also the first day that i had it i was a lot more active i think because i was aware that it was there and i was trying to get some good data out of it but then by day sort of three or four i I'd sort of forgotten that i was wearing it and you could, there was a definite dip in how much i was standing up and how much more i was sitting down which is quite interesting yeah. but i do stand up more than i thought i did which is quite nice to know. yeah yeah. Yeah, it turns out I don't yeah, sit down I, I, for a, I, a long time very often. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's a good reason to measure more than three or four days from the participants that they might be kind of pretending or changing their behavior. But if you if you go seven or ten days or even two weeks, usually people are are not pretending that long. They usually forget or or it's a good behavior change if they are being more active for two two weeks. So I think it's a good good start. Well, yeah, that's true. Yeah. So Yeah, that's so, definitely true. I think that's one of the main things I like about it as well. Is having that longer time to collect data from. It's, yeah. Mm, yeah. It's helpful. Uh, and what do you think could be improved in Fibian? What what's what's missing? What would you like to see in the in the features or or whatever? Um, I think one of the only things with it is the, um, the sort of size of the leg strap that you've got. So mm. if you've got people that don't have pockets, then you've got the um, the leg strap system, which is a good, it's a great idea. But I did try it with that for a couple of one of the days, and it does get a little bit uncomfortable under the mm. day because it is quite a chunky sort of strap. That would be sort of the only thing really that might put people off wearing it is having that sort of bulkiness around it. I think if there was a way that sort of um, maybe clip it onto a belt strap or have it as a way of putting it on like the top of a pair of leggings or something, that might be mm. more helpful. But I'm not sure what that would do in terms of the data collection and how accurate that would then be, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So for the for the accuracy, it needs to be in the following the movement and orientation of the thigh. And we actually had like a, a thinner uh, leg strap in the beginning, but some people were saying mm. that then then to have it tight enough, then it kind of creates pressure when you have a smaller area. So we actually make it make it wider, mm. and then people were saying that now it stays better on the place and doesn't create as much pressure. But I think we should probably bring as mm. other option also the kind of lighter version and. I think one thing you could consider, we have been using also the medical adhesive that you, you waterproof the device and then attach. Yeah. Mm, although one of the challenges with the older people might be that they might have a little bit different skin. It's not as, as strong anymore. So then it might be challenging and it might be reacting a little bit easier than, than with the younger people. So yeah, that's a... It is a bit of challenge, the attachment of device always. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, so for the point about um, having things attached, yeah, it's definitely a, a good point. That was one of the things for not using the other sensors, the fact that it had to be attached to the body. So with having it as a, a wearable device that's not physically attached, it's a lot better. Mm. Yeah. And who who would you recommend Fibian to? What kind of projects you think it, it fits and what kind of project you wouldn't you wouldn't use it in? Um, 
I think the where it would be most useful is projects where you do want that longer data collection period. So I think something like I think on your um website it's something about less than eight hours it doesn't really do much so it would have to be for any project that's over say a week or two weeks to get that sort of habitual data that people just what people are doing in their everyday life and that would be the projects that it's most useful for less useful would be yeah. i guess looking at specific movements because i know you've got sort of walking running cycling i think was on there wasn't that Hmm. So if you're looking at, say, really specific movements around a home, looking at sort of the activity day living research and getting that really specific detail, probably not as helpful for that, but that's a very niche area and it's something that, you know, you probably get a lot more specialist equipment for. But yeah, just for sort of general health behaviour type research, I think it's, yeah, a really good system. Hmm. Yeah. Makes sense. Uh, and how is your future project? How is the how is the timeline? When do you plan to get your measurements going? And and what's what's in the plans now? Well, ho- hopefully, when everything because we're we're starting to come out of lockdowns and everything in the UK now at the moment, and how mm. that works out. So we're hoping to start getting some data collection going in May June time. So the next couple of months, we're starting to recruit some people. And getting some of this yeah. data collected. Yeah. It's part of the idea. Yeah. And how how big sample group you are looking? How many people would, would you like to like to measure? I'm not sure at the moment. That's something we're still in discussions about of how many we can recruit and where we're going to recruit them from. Yeah. But yeah, we're still we're really not sure at the moment. It's in a lot of a lot of the planning phase still. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, hopefully you get your project starting and no need for social distancing in in some months. So good luck with your project and mm-hmm. thanks a lot for taking the time for this this session. Yeah, no worries. Thank you very much. It's been um yeah. Been nice talking to you today. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you.